Welcome back to Farm and Hammer, everyone. A couple videos back, I had talked about losing quite a few calves to an unknown disease. After I'd posted that video, things had gotten better. I hadn't lost a calf in four or five days, so I thought we were doing okay. But since then, it has gotten way worse. But yeah, I'll kind of show you which calves I got left, um, kind of explain what has been happening for the last three weeks, and, uh, and hopefully the vet will have me some answers by the end of this week, because this is, this is pretty depressing. So anyway, before we do that, I pulled four older ones out of the group pen and they are getting weaned now. So I'm gonna move them in with the other weaned calves. That'll make 18 total that are weaned. So yeah, let's get them taken care of. All right, so I drug the top of this feeder out here. Um, the reason I took it off of the actual frame is because the feeder is too tall for these little calves to eat. They can reach it, but it's just a strain on their neck. So um, I've got this one laying here and then this one here, which is what I was feeding the smaller group with. And they always like to climb in them and poop in them, but anyway. So like I said, I've got 18 weaned. There's 14 in this group. I've got a couple more down there making their way up, but here's the most recent group I weaned. I pulled, I pulled them out here yesterday, so they're not technically weaned yet, but they're off milk. Um, 13 there, he's been off milk for a couple weeks. He just quit drinking milk. He just ate grain and hay now, so he kind of weaned himself, but the rest of them, the rest of them have been on milk this whole time. Anyway, these guys are eight weeks old. Um, that's what I've been weaning this whole group at. I used to wean from six to eight weeks, but on the heat wave, I've been weaning at right at eight weeks for all of them so far. And I think I'll continue that uh, just because the calves get, calves are getting a whole lot bigger. So um, now that I've lost so many calves, I do have extra milk powder and uh, I'd like to use that up and get these calves bigger, at least the ones that are left. So um, anyway, Anyway, now I gotta see if I can get the new group in here without letting the old group out, so. The younger ones aren't gonna like the feed for the first couple days just because they're so concerned about getting milk. But uh, the older ones have got it figured out. You can see this one here. She hasn't had feed for a full day and she's already got her stomach full on grass. So these older calves, these older calves are looking good. I'm really pleased with them. Anytime you wean bottle calves the first week after they're weaned, they do have a little rough patch. Um, you just gotta make sure they're eating and make sure no one's getting sick and you should be okay. So anyway, I'm gonna let them be, let them finish up, come back and check on them here in five minutes. Make sure no one's tripped in the feeder and uh, hopefully soon they'll be big enough to eat out of an actual feeder that they can't step in, so. So now we're in here with the bottle calves, the ones that are still on milk. You can see this pen, there's six of them. This pen, there's seven, I believe. This group has got another week and a half and then they'll be eight weeks and they will be weaned. Um, so they don't have all that long. The two small black ones here, those two are actually part of that group. I moved them over so they could drink. So um, anyway, all the ones in here with a white face will be weaned in a week and a half. You can see they're excellent looking calves. Really big, they get as much milk as they want and they, they definitely get it, so. I really haven't lost as many of them as I have the others, but but the heat wave is still going. Um, as you can see, I've only got one nipple hooked up right now. 
So with there only being five or six calves in this pen, if I had two of them going, which I did at one point, they don't keep both of them flowing constantly. And whenever it's freezing cold like it is right now, uh, one of the lines will freeze or both of them. And so what I've been doing, I've just been pinching off the other line and, uh, and just let them feed off of one nipple. And uh, that way they've pretty much got milk flowing at least once an hour. One of them comes up and drinks and uh, it keeps the line from actually freezing. So that's one thing I learned. If I had more calves in here, I could have two, two nipples going. Um, this group, they're just more aggressive drinkers. So I do have two going there, but uh, anyway, that's the story on the heat wave. So far, so good. Like I said, I've been really pleased with this machine so far. Um, I have run into a couple minor issues, but I'll go through all of those and the benefits of this thing whenever I do a full review video. I know there was a couple comments in the last video or two, people wanting some more info on this thing. So I will do a comprehensive review here in a couple weeks. But as I mentioned a couple videos back, um, I've had a really rough time um, with bottle calves this year. I've been raising calves here on YouTube since I think 2017. Um, so you guys have seen me raise quite a few calves over the years. And I've always tried my best to be as honest as possible when it comes to farming. So anytime I lost one, I'd always tell you guys, yeah, I'd die to this. Um, and normally I'd lose one or two out of 40 or 50, which honestly for bottle calves is relatively good. Um, obviously you shoot for zero, like I always say, but um, occasionally there is one or two that don't make it. This year, as you guys know, I was planning on raising quite a few more calves than I normally do. I normally do 40 to 50 in a season so either in the spring or the fall and this year um, since i had two heat waves going i was hoping to raise anywhere from 60 to 120 and uh, i did end up purchasing 65. like i mentioned a couple weeks ago i'm done buying calves because i had a wild disease sweep through the barn and uh, we're still not sure what it is when i posted the video last time saying i was losing calves um, i'd already spoken to the vet he said treat him for coccidiosis. I had been doing that and I hadn't lost calves for four days. So I thought maybe that was it, maybe we solved the problem. But the day after I posted the video, I came out to the barn and there were four dead. And that's more than I normally lose in a whole herd. And they were all dead in one morning. Um, and the night before, I always check them every morning and night, fill up their milk. Um, the night before, perfectly fine, they acted normal. They were just dead the next morning. So. Um, Anyway, I called the vet as soon as I found them. I took them in to do some necropsies to see if the vet could figure anything out. We cut all four of them open and uh, we were looking for any crazy signs of anything that we could find. Essentially what the vet found, um, part of their lungs were really inflamed at the bottom. And uh, there were a couple that had, the, bottom was, the bottoms of their lung were kind of black almost, but the top looked normal. Uh, so he said, obviously it's something respiratory and uh, he said he can't guarantee it's pneumonia, but so we took samples of the spleen, kidney, liver, uh, stomach, intestines, all that stuff. Um, those got sent off to the lab. And so he said they should have results for me this next week, hopefully. But since I took those four in, I've lost a couple more calves. And so it's still continuing to go. And uh, it's just not, not looking good. But the other thing the vet said, he said there's not really much I can do um, since they're not really showing any signs. He said if something looks at your own, you can give them some Draxin, which I had been doing. And normally for pneumonia, Draxin, they could be on their deathbed, they can't walk. If I give them Draxin and I give them some fluids, they'll be up in six, eight hours and perfectly fine. But whatever this is, when I can tell a calf is starting to go down and die, I've given it Draxin, I've tube fed it, gave it some liquids and fluids, and uh, it'll be dead in a couple hours. So whatever this is, it's killing them quick and they're not really showing any signs. But, but when the vet was looking at their lungs, he did say um, what it could be. As you guys know, we were in a drought this year. We had dust flying everywhere for the first couple months that I had calves. And uh, he said it could be dust that got in their lungs, caused some inflammation and irritation. Basically it damaged their lungs early on. And then we got this cold snap when we went from 80 degrees to 30 degrees. He said that could have just given them all pneumonia. And since their lungs were already partially damaged, it just killed them. So that was one thing he just mentioned. He said that is something that could have caused it. So as you guys know, almost every year when I'm done raising calves, I always say I'm probably done with it forever <laughs> and I end up getting calves again. And that's just because I love raising these things. I have a good time. And of course, after four months of feeding them every day, sure it gets old and tiring and I say I wanna quit, but um, it seems like I always get back into it. So, so I love raising these things. I have a good time. Um, it doesn't always make a whole lot of money, but I enjoy doing it. But when something like this hits, which I've never dealt with before, um, 
it's pretty easy to lose all motivation. So, and it's not just about what this is causing financially for me. Um, no farmer wants to have animals die in their care, especially something like this where there's just nothing, nothing you can do. You can try everything and just nothing's working. So it's pretty depressing. I don't like hauling month old dead baby calves out of the barn. So I don't think anyone does. But because I've always tried to be pretty honest about finances around bottle calves, um, I will tell you guys, after I've lost so many, um, it looks like if everything goes well from here on, I might break even. And if I lose a couple more, I'm, I'm losing money this year. So, and that's not even including what I charge for labor. So um, it's probably for sure a loss for this round. So anyway, I don't want to be super depressing, but um, that's just that's just what's going on. Like I said, I've tried to be as honest as I can with you guys on all these videos over the years, and uh, that's not going to change just because something went terribly wrong. So anyway, once again, financially, I'm going to be okay. I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. Um, I didn't throw all the money I had into bottle calves. Um, and raising bottle calves is super risky. I've always known that. I've just never had an issue like this. I've always heard stories here and there of people getting some crazy disease and they'll lose half the barn. Um, but that's just something I've never dealt with. I don't think anyone can mentally prepare for that. So um, yeah, just for anyone else that's getting started, maybe new to this, make sure you've got your finances under control. Don't put all your money into something as risky as bottle calves. Obviously I do have a full-time job. I've got other cows and other streams of income. So this isn't the end of the world for me, but just a little advice to any other young people trying to get started don't put all your money into something this risky because you could have something like this happen and lose it all. So anyway guys, that's farming for you. Um, can't expect everything to go right, but you don't expect things to go this wrong. So anyway guys, with that being said, thank you for watching. I'm getting mauled by calves, so I'm gonna shut this thing off and uh, I will see you guys next time.